Hi everyone, it's Quentin here. In 2005, I created a documentary series for SBS called My Voice. It was a series designed to show how disabled people communicate through their art forms. Uh, there are five episodes um, and I really want to show them to you. What I want to warn you about is that one of these uh, participants, her name is Kathy, Sadly, she passed away a few years ago. So, if you don't like seeing people that have passed away, uh, maybe this isn't the video for you. But it's a very heartwarming story, and all the people that participated are wonderful. And later on, I can point you out to where you can obtain their art and to uh, see more of their work. Uh, it's called My Voice. I hope you enjoy it, and thank you to the South Australian Film Corporation and Screen Australia and SBS who funded it. Thank you. My voice. I used to work as a stockman and I was um, knocked from a horse and I broke my neck and became a quadriplegic. I knew from that moment that uh, I could never go back to doing the work I did. When I came home from hospital, I didn't know what the future would be after having spent many months of rehabilitation. There's no real manual that's been written to say it will be like this, it will be like that. And so a friend of mine gave me some pens and pencils and asked me to occupy my time, which I did by doodling and, and found that I enjoyed what I was doing and I was reasonably good at it. I can't actually hold a pen in my hand, so I have to paint using a, a writing splint, which was made for me. And so by being able to paint, I was able to see things differently and gain a new identity in a new career. And uh, I really began to love it. I don't go looking for subject matter. Um, what happens is I might be simply going to the supermarket and a shadow will appear at a certain time of day that I've not noticed before. And it's what I'm attracted to by seeing something new that I hadn't seen. And so I don't actually choose my subject, my subjects come to me. When I paint this picture, I think I'll really try and capture the way the neon sticks out from the side of the wall and casts fantastic shadows. It's lovely. Many people um, see my work and think that, uh, why do you paint such ugly subject matter? But I find that I enjoy painting subjects that are city-based because I'm a city person and these are the subjects that I'm most accustomed to. But I do find beauty in the city. There's lots of bright colour if you hone yourself to, to look for these things. And they do appear. I think that I've been very fortunate to uh, have been reasonably successful in my career as a painter. I'm very happy that my works sell and people can relate to them and enjoy living with them for a long time. I don't see painting as a job because I'm very much committed to what I'm doing. It certainly is a way of life. I enjoy the actual process of painting, but finding more difficult subject matter or more challenging subject matter gives a great satisfaction when you pull it off. Hey Richard. Hey Sam. How are you going? Very, very well. Good to see you. What do you think of it? It looks fantastic and... Um... People often ask me, why do I paint? And I think the answer that I can give them is because I like to show the world what I see and by painting it's a much easier way of describing it because it's a visual thing and so 
I show people the things that excite me, the things that influence me, the things that I'm attracted to, and that's why I paint. I love it. My voice. From the moment I step out on stage, I'm just in my own world. And everything disappears and I'm just in my, my own little bubble. The dancers are with me. Yeah, nothing else really matters and my thoughts and energy are all concentrated on the audience and on the music. I first discovered dance when I saw a Restless production and they came to Wyala. I was just so taken by it as a spectator and watching it and at that point I didn't identify dance as a possible, I guess, career path. It was just something that looked beautiful on stage, but it was that beauty that made me go, yeah, I can do this. I can be part of this. Yeah, I guess before I started dancing, yeah, I just wasn't aware of my body. I wasn't in tune um, with it as much. At the moment, um, we're working on a show called Vocabulary, um, and it's a collaboration between Restless and the Australian Dance Theatre. It's an amazing experience just to go in every day and just to know that you're going to be dancing on the same stage as you know, professional dancers who tour the world every year, you know, it's, yeah, it's awesome. Working with Dan's been really interesting and in a work, in my case, which is about identity and the dancers really got to talk a lot about their own identity and aspirations. Dan was really, really um, very spot on in his observations and really I just you know, forgot about the word disability. Dan was really just one of the dancers and I'm sure he's got a fantastic future ahead of him. He's only 21 and pretty remarkable for his age. I'm just walking along and then I catch my reflection in a shop window and for a moment there I just go, oh yeah, I am disabled. I was diagnosed uh, with a taxi cerebral palsy at about the age of 18 months. Dance just kind of made me stronger. I'm a lot more steady on my feet. Yeah, I've got tons more balance than I used to. I'm told by people all the time that I do have a very unique quality, you know, because it's this God-given attribute that makes whatever I create with my body on the stage special. And I think that's the main thing I get out of it now is just the fact that dance is a way of communication and that everybody can move, so therefore they can dance, so therefore they're communicating. I have a disability called muscular dystrophy. It deteriorates your muscles. I spent many years in an institution and I've been in a wheelchair for about 25, 26 years uh, because when I used to walk, I used to go for very nasty falls. I've had several broken limbs from it. <sighs> um, so I decided to blow it. I'll go in a wheelchair. I also need, um, need to use a ventilator quite a, a lot of the day now, about 17, 18, 19 hours a day. Many years ago, I started to think about trying to experiment with wood burning. 
then I did the picture of Sleeping Beauty and I just got into it so much and I found I was able to sell my work very easily when I uh, would do wood burning rather than doing drawings. So I really like to experiment with different mediums. I started to do a picture for my auntie and I went back to it about three months later and my body changed so that I could not do wood burning anymore. Yeah, it was a pretty sad feeling, um, but with my disability, I've had to just go through life, just blocking that off, just getting on, not like saying, okay, that's something else gone. About four or five years later, I got a computer and I started to use use a computer to produce drawings. I sat down and started to develop Coco. I thought, right, I'm gonna do a book about the life of a child in a wheelchair. My legs don't work, so I have an electric wheelchair to take me everywhere. Every day, Mummy and I take my dog Gypsy for a walk in the park next to our house. I sort of created Coco to be a go-getter. Saturday is a great fun. Mummy and I go to the market. We catch the bus at the bus stop near my house. At the market, I like all the smells of the roasted nuts, meats, fresh fruit and vegetables. I like all the different noises too. I pretty well taught myself quite a bit how to draw on the computer. I didn't really know where to start. So I started using the mouse and I pretty well figured it out as I went along really. And I like to think that I'm living my life to the full. The way I use the computer as a medium has been very empowering. It's been very liberating. It liberates my body. It's an equaliser, so it's helped me to, to adapt to my situation as well. I like to do my homework on my computer, and after I finish my homework, I like playing computer games. Get out there and enjoy it, and that's what I do, and that's what Coco does as well. Every day I have so much to do and so much fun. What do you like to do best? When we're at a gig, I can see the whole room um, full of people. I couldn't recognise any of them, but I can see, like, if there's people sitting at the back of the room, I can just see that they're there. Maybe another day, not the right time. Got no time to give, not the right time. Just let it go. Uh, the band's called Legally Blind. Originally, five of the six members were legally blind. Hey. Oi, mate, how's things? Cool, mate, excellent. Gordon, mate. Cool, 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 excellent. No one, two, three. Up. I went out one night and saw a band with a couple of friends, and they were all about my age, and I got talking to them and just came back and said, let's start a band. So um, I started bass because we needed a bass player, and I needed to get into the band somehow. <laughs> so I'm only legally blind, which means I've got about 5% vision. Um, I've got two over 60, so what a fully sighted person can see at 60 metres, I can see it too. Oh, here we go. Not being able to drive a car is probably the hardest thing that any vision impaired person has to deal with. And it's always frustrating, especially when you've got kids and you want to go somewhere at night and then you've got to get a taxi or drag them around on public transport. A lot of things that have come to me have come to me because of my vision impairment. So rather than look at it as a thing that, oh, I have to deal with this, I look at it as a, an opportunity to do things that I wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. Ever since I was a child, I always loved listening to music, but being able to play it is something else again. Or it just gives me that extra outlet for maybe letting out emotions and just getting out of some extra energy or something. You know, it's just it's a really positive thing. 
I like I spent a lot of time practicing and trying to improve myself, get my fingers moving um, more and more. And as I get better, I try and improve my bass lines as I go. But I'd say, look, I'm an average bass player. When we print out our set list, we print them in like 24 point or 36 point if we can get it on the page so that we can read it. And one thing with a lot of bands is when you don't know your endings and your beginnings that well, they nod to each other and look at each other a certain way. We, we, love it. <laughs> we have to make big gestures to each other to get, <laughs> to get the message across. This one's cool, give it a rest. it's the opportunity to play in front of people more than the money. A good crowd that enjoy our music is far, far better than getting $400 to play to five people that just sit there. We like doing weddings because you get a three course meal and alcohol thrown in. <laughs> It's, it's never been like something we've said, oh, let's quit our jobs and do this, because we probably couldn't, but um, it's been something that we've just had a good passion for and kept it, tried to keep it as fun. In Victoria, I used to be a really wild man in the bike scene. So one of the guys said to me, he told, he's told, me, he told me about 10 times how to tighten a chunk of a motorbike, and I couldn't work it out. So he said, that's it, you're picking things like the jungle. And it stuck. I was uh, riding a push bike, drunk in the push bike I was, and I rode for an intersection and, hit a, and, and the car hit me and it took off and left me dying on the side of the road. So in, in, I'm a left uh, intellectually disabled from that ac ac accident, which means I've got memory loss, poor concentration level, and also it's schizophrenic this year. But there's no need to go on about that sort of stuff. It's just, it's just life. Life's not meant to be easy, and it's not. So you make the best of what you can do the best you can, and don't worry about it, and, and don't worry about the bad stuff. I was in 1998 averaging 500 pictures a year, I wasn't paying everything though before before the accident. After the accident, I started paying every every single thing I could, I could get my hands on. The house is actually set up for people to come and come and enjoy themselves. It's a gallery, studio, house, everything everything in one. All right, come and I'll give you I'll give you a tour of the house. Here we go, this is the gallery room here. It's actually about uh, 300 pictures here. Over here we had the bargain box, the $50 ones. Basically when I moved in here, it was just a bare house. I moved in with 100 pictures. Now there's over 1,000. This is the hallway. Oh look, just do it, have a hopeful boy. Sign the sign of the times, this one's called. We the people, we the people power. We can, we can, we can dream. We can too, absolutely. Here we go. Be nice, mate. Give all. Now, yeah, mate, spelling it. See, make it one word. Give all. I love words. I love playing. I love. I love. I love to play the words. And see this here. All around here is little things. These little birds keep you on the picture. And these brush strokes take you down to there, to that figure. This one here takes you to this figure. This pushes you back around to here. These take it around to make the eye dance all around the picture. And the eye, a good painting is one that where the eye always stands on. This is a classic case of that, where the eye does not bounce off the picture. That's the, that's the end of the tour. Painting is my way, my way of talking. I communicate through the brush. All my, all my emotions go, go through the brush. If 
for instance, when I had the schizophrenic attack this year, I was trying to paint it away. I thought I'd try and uh, give her the feeling I was painting all the emotions and trying to make myself better by painting good, good, good pictures and good happy stuff. So I communicate through the brush. And hopefully uh, give people joy, make them happy. It's uh, the disability has opened me up to the meaning of that, of that, I'm a, that I'm a true artist, that I just love to paint. That's my life. Uh, and also, the message is in them are also the way I see life. So it's given me a true meaning of life that the accident has. Even when things go bad, you make good out of it. Try and turn it around and make the, be make the best you can, and do the best you can. Well, that's that one. I couldn't live without painting. I have to paint every day, to paint all the time. That's what I'm. I'm an artist. An artist paints, and I paint.